What's the difference between vitamin K1 and vitamin K2? Vitamin K is very underappreciated, maybe because it's one of the least well understood vitamins. For example, while there is only one vitamin of vitamin K1, phyloquinone, there are 13 vitamins of vitamin K2, menaquinone 2 through menaquinone 14. But we don't yet know if they differ in their biological activity beyond absorption rates in the intestines and half-life in the body. Certainly all forms of vitamin K seem to support blood clotting, bone metabolism, cellular function, and the prevention of soft tissue calcification. And it doesn't matter whether you're getting vitamin K1 or vitamin K2, increasing dietary vitamin K reduces risk of cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, age-related cognitive decline, and dementia. So what do we know about the differences between vitamin K1 and vitamin K2? There is a pretty big difference in absorption. We only absorb about 10% of the vitamin K1 we consume, but vitamin K2 is about 100% absorbed. So while it's typical for about 90% of the vitamin K in a diet to be vitamin K1, it's also typical for about 50% of the vitamin K in your body to be vitamin K1, and the rest various forms of vitamin K2. There's also a difference in how long vitamin K hangs around. Vitamin K1 only stays in the blood for a few hours, so it's mostly transported to the liver and used there. Whereas vitamin K2 can stay in circulation for days, so it appears to be more readily used in other tissues throughout the body. Our main source of vitamin K1 is dark green vegetables, especially leafy greens, like kale, collards, spinach, and parsley. Vitamin K2 is found in some fermented foods like natto, organ meats, egg yolks, some hard cheeses, butter, and dark meat chicken. However, for most of us, we're getting our vitamin K2 not from food, but from our gut bacteria. They don't need vitamin K1 to turn into vitamin K2. Instead, the main substrate is torosmate, which is produced by the shikimate pathway. 